Here we go. One of the things I sort of wanted to talk about since we don't have many changes here is something that's been in pretty much all of these interim versions and that's this idwlog.dbg thing that you get in the C drive, it's a hidden file so you won't see it unless you've got the hidden files showing and yeah you may notice it that it's there and as you can see here it keeps going up and up in size as it starts at well right now it's at 2.36 if I refresh it's at 2.37 and it just keeps on going. Now what is it? Well IDW stands for Interim Developer Workstation which means it's a build of Windows that is sort of stable enough for people in Microsoft to use and that won't crash on them every two minutes. So let's just hope they didn't log out and press the button because that would have blue screened. But anyway yeah and what this does is well it's created by this piece of software. This isn't, this isn't in 2296 because obviously that's the public build and there's no need to have that in the public build. It's created by this here, IDW log. And as you can see it's IDW log 2000 system client. And the author was Wally W. Ho. Or Ho W. Wally? Or I don't know. But yeah, and it sets up, it's set up as a service in the thing. I disabled it so I've had to re-enable it for this. So it's not, I don't know if it comes up as IDW login tool but it's actually installed as a service when you start up. But what it does is, I mean as apparent to the user, is just update this file that gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Because it doesn't show any UI or anything because it's a service. So what actually does it do? Well if you look at this it's a DBG file. You might think, ooh that's some sort of arcane file format file that I'd have no chance of understanding but you'd be wrong. You'll notice that it's just a normal text file and what it does is well, it queries some system information. Let's make it a bit bigger. There you go, you see it's got the, the build and it's looking for other stuff like well it's got a machine ID and it gets the username, the user domain, the architecture of the computer, the locale, some system information, the RAM size, the video hardware, network information, terminal services information, Hydra is the code name for terminal services. Um, yeah and then what it does is, if we scroll down, a bit, oh yeah, you can see, it tries to connect to an internal Microsoft computer called PMP Triage and the share IDW log WHSTL and then obviously since that doesn't exist on pretty much anybody's network by default it'll fail and so it'll try connecting again without a username and password and it'll still fail because it still doesn't exist so then at some point it'll go stuff that and it tries to open a different When we test it, yeah, it tries to open it again, but as a different user with a password, and obviously it still fails. And I think it looks for some other um, network computer share things. To no, okay. Well, anyway, it just keeps doing that and keeps trying to connect to that thing forever and ever, and it just keeps writing to this log that it's failed. So that's why this log keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. If you disable the service, nothing happens, you know, it doesn't impact Windows in any way, it's just a bit of information. But anyway, the easiest way for you to see what it does when it actually does connect to this PMP Triage computer is to change the name of your computer to PMP Triage. You can change it on a network, but then it's a, you have to faff around with permissions, you know, on a different computer on the network, but you have to faff around with permissions and users and stuff like that, so it's just easier to do the one that you're on. So you call it PMP Triage, then you have to reboot. You click no because you first need to create a share called IDW log WHSTL. I don't know what WHSTL stands for. Sharing. 
need to share it. Inspect sure. Yep, that'll do. And then you need to restart to make the name change complete. So we'll see you after that. Okay, so now we've rebooted. So here we go. Let's see what it did. And as you can see, it popped out some sort of file with a weird name. 2287 dash. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's just rename it to text so we can see what it did. Because it is a text file. And here you go. It's just loads of information about your computer. Well, well it's loads of information about the computer that it was running on. As you can see, it's got the machine ID, the username that it couldn't get for some reason, don't know why. Um, platform is still called Windows 2000 by, <laughs> by this, so there you go. Even though it's 5.1, so I'm not quite sure why that's that, but anyway. Yeah, we've got the RAM, the graphics type, locale, sound drivers, net cards, not sure what CPU 6 means, but an unknown SCSI and some large number of infrareds. So yeah, and that's it, just that file. It just pops that file on the PMP triage server and then if we look at the services it will probably have deleted itself. Nope. Anyway, well it stopped anyway so now it doesn't run and I think it sets itself to... No, it just boots up and... Hmm, I'm not sure if it runs again after that. I thought it deleted itself. I'm pretty sure it's got code to delete the surface that it's running under. And or sometimes it's in the startup folder as well. So yeah, I can run a bit of a experiment by restarting and see if it creates another one of those. And yep, after a restart you can see it has actually created another one. And it will continue to create them, so Microsoft servers would probably get pretty full with all these if a lot of people were using them. I mean, there, look, you start it and it will create another one. So, yeah. So, the best thing to do about it is just disable it because you know you don't need this and you don't need the information because you know the information. But, yeah, it'd probably help Microsoft figure out what sort of configurations the, the builds were running on and stuff like that. 